When it comes to the question of who will win the next general election, it's here in Uxbridge later this month that we might get the clearest answer yet. A by-election has been called for the 20th of July after Boris Johnson vacated the seat he has held for the last eight years, a seat the Conservatives have held since it was created in 2010. But now Labour has its eyes set firmly on winning Uxbridge back. And indeed, with a majority of just 7,200 in the middle of a cost of living crisis with a deeply unpopular government, if Keir Starmer can't win here now, the chances of him winning a general election at all could start to look very thin indeed. I could see it flip to uh, Labour. I don't think, um, you know, I think a lot of the general public see through what Boris has sort of like done, you know, with Brexit, with everything that he's told. It's just been, you know, as far as I'm concerned, a pack of lies. I definitely won't vote Conservative for the first time ever. First time ever? Mm -hmm. What's changed? Um, I just think it's a complete shambles. Well, I wouldn't have ever voted for him anyway. And after the last 12 years, who would? The top concern for voters here, the cost of living and people's personal finances. Yeah, with the cost of living and then the wages aren't that great as well, so the balance is not really there. Are you able to sort of balance the books in terms of your house? Are you able to make ends meet or are you finding things difficult at the moment? No, I don't make ends meet, actually. Um, I get my mum to pay half my rent. They're going to put offers forward, they're going in to buy houses and the interest rate they were getting maybe a week or two ago is completely different to now. Uh, so they need to change their offers or not being able to get the mortgage. So th that's probably the biggest struggle we're finding. So you'd like to see the government step in and maybe force the, Yeah, the definitely, to do, to, do, to do something. I think they tried to counteract it with a bit of um, the stamp duty uh, chain that helped a little bit. But again, you're talking, you're talking saving about six grand on stamp duty compared to um, paying or 40, 50 grand more on a mortgage over the years. So it, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. So. Like prices are increasing, so it's, it's getting kind of, you know, hard. And student finance isn't really covering yeah. it. It covers our accommodation, but we don't really have the finance yeah. to feed ourselves, look after mm. ourselves. So it's a bit of a struggle. So what do you do? What do you do? We have we'll, to work. We'll, we have, we to, have work. to work. Yeah. 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 Like we go from our lectures straight into work. Wow. Yeah. So you're doing a full-time degree? Yeah. 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 And you work working, how much are you guys working? We try to do like 32 hours a week. So you're doing 32 hours a week yeah. and a full-time degree. Yeah. And you're having to do that because we are, cost yeah. of finance. Yeah. yeah, cost of living. And there are worries too about the state of public services. People here at Hillingdon Hospital have told us that they're generally very happy with the quality of care that they and their loved ones have received. But when it comes to the support that doctors and nurses are getting from the government, they tell a very different story. The NHS is doing a good job. And what about the government? No, I think the government's been dreadful, actually, in all respects. Certainly the uh, nurses and the doctors are working their tails off. What about the politicians? Politicians never work their tails off. Who do you think is responsible for <laughs> things that are going wrong? If you believe what the Labour people are saying, it's 13 years of Tory mismanagement. It's an easy you know, stone to, to throw. Uh, they've definitely cut, been cutting and cutting and cutting. With things looking tough for the Tories, we went to the local Conservative Association to talk to loyal party members, but we couldn't find any. This by-election clearly isn't just a referendum on Boris Johnson. It's the state of the economy, it's the state of our public services that are the pressing issues here in Uxbridge. But people are still critical of the performance of Conservative leaders past and present. And Rishi Sunak as a Prime Minister, as a leader, is he doing a good job? No, he's a waste of space. He's very weak, he's just dodging everything. It's a bit like playing dodgeball. He's, he's dodging all the questions, dodging Keir Starmer, dodging journalists. He just wants to stay there as long as he can, but he's not going to do anything. Oh, I, that guy's already rich. Yeah. He's, he's got a wife, he's got <laughs> loads of money. Yeah. Do you think he understands what I you guys are going through? He understands the struggle. No, like, you have to be where we are right now to yeah. understand what we're going through. Yeah. I've got no confidence in them whatsoever. Yeah. And is that a reflection on the outgoing MP, Boris Johnson, or is that a reflection on the it's current government? On the whole lot. All of them? Yep. Rishi Sunak too? Yes. No, I think he's, he's doing a, a <laughs> decent job in difficult circumstances. Oh. So you, you, yeah. might, you might give him a back I, I still wouldn't vote Conservative, I'm afraid. I used to have faith in who I voted for. Um, obviously, I voted for Boris is our MP, no more. I thought he was a breath of fresh air when he came in, but what, a, what an idiot. Do you feel like he let you down? Absolutely. 
And that's been a common theme here in Uxbridge, a sense of fatigue at the government, frustration at how things are going. It looks like it's going to be a difficult night for the Conservatives. But if Rishi Sunak can lose this seat narrowly, it might just give him some hope that the picture isn't quite as bad as the current polls suggest. For Labour, if Keir Starmer is to answer questions about whether he really is on course to become the next Prime Minister, he needs to not just win here, but to win big.